What's up? It's your boy Rampage Jackson here with Bear and the man Chuck Liddell. He finally made it to fade on site. Man, y'all gonna love this one. A legend, a I true legend. Two legends sitting across each other. I'm surprised y'all didn't scrap. <laughs> y'all, y'all look like two wildebeests in the plains. Like when wildebeests are hungry. When you guys walked in the office, I just saw like two alpha males staring each other in the eyes. Like who's gonna actually put their hand up first to say hi? It's right. kind of interesting. But I'm gonna tell you why I fuck with Chuck though. <laughs> uh, a lot of people don't know this, but uh, when Chuck came over to um, Pride and he fought, um, what was that, Alice Overeem? Yeah, Overeem, yeah. And we was we was getting ready to fight in a, in a tournament. This is why I fuck with you, Chuck. After you after you beat him, you came to me and you talked to me. And you was like, "Hey, looks like it's gonna be us next. Let's go to a bar and have a drink." I said, "Oh shit! Ain't nobody ever, ain't nobody, ain't nobody ever fought ever said some shit like that to me." And we went to in Japan. Yeah, talking, <laughs> we had a good time out there. Yeah, we had funny a good time out there, man. <laughs> Entertaining, yeah. <laughs> this guy's funny. You guys are, you were just <laughs> friendly like that? that. Oh yeah, I was. I mean, it's, it's a man. It's fighting. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to kill you when we're in the ring, but hey, man, when it's over, we, we're friends. Yeah, I'm good. With, I'm good. With almost, almost everybody in the, in the fight game. Man, I, he did try to kill me. I tell you what, uh, I've never been dropped from a body shot, nothing like that. But I, I don't know if Chuck remember this, but that first fight, he hit me with one of the hardest body shots I ever <laughs> felt in my life. I made him all the, ooh, and I went in for the takedown. And I was saved by the bell. <laughs> you remember, you yeah, remember? I remember right now. Yeah, I was like, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought he would go down with that one. Damn it. Nah, that's good. Yeah. I mean, I mean, Chuck, you're such a an, an icon, right? You, and same with you, Rampage, you know? But Chuck, you really set the bar for you know where UFC was and what it was and giving it a storyline and becoming a character. I mean, so many people owe you their career. The UFC owes you so much. You you put the entire industry and sport on your back. And you know, we see guys like Joe Rogan, you know, like there's this video right here. He's talking about you having the most insane chin of all time. You would go in there and just destroy people. Yeah. There was a I time mean, he had with the bricks. Was, it just was, it just it couldn't is. do anything to you. And yeah. and you you became this like larger than life character. Kind of walk me through, and for the for the fight fans, like what gave you that passion in the beginning of UFC to be like, this is my character. I'm gonna walk in the ring, and I'm either gonna die or win. I don't know that. I never was a character. That's what made it easy. I mean, I just went out and was me. I liked fighting. Loved fighting since I was a kid. I've done karate since I was 12. I thought, and you know, I used to even say in high school, I used to say, man, it sucks. Well, the thing I'm really good at. I can't make money doing. And I was talking <laughs> about street fighting. And I was just, I was like, you know, and I, I just, it just, and then along the way, I just kind of fell into it. Like, everyone was like, how'd you get into it? How'd you get started? You know, I was wrestling in college, got done, finishing up school. I hadn't finished, you know, still take, taking slow credits when you're, when you're wrestling. Just don't take as many credits as you probably should. But so I had a couple of years left and I was sitting around finishing up school. And, uh, you know, someone asked me, uh, actually, I, a guy, Alfie Alcaraz. Fought, um, fought in UFC, he fought the Jens Pulver to, to uh, 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 what do you call it, a split decision uh, back then. I mean, Alfie's a tough guy, but anyway, he was kickboxing because I, ta- I taught him how to kick when we were wrestling together. And uh, he got into kickboxing after he went back to Vegas with uh, One Kick Nick. Oh, yeah. And and so we're, I went to go watch him fight. And uh, and Alfie's is there, and I, 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 I was, you know, weighing in and everything, and, and Nick comes over. Hey, man, Alfie says you're pretty tough. You want to fight tomorrow night? I'm like, yeah, sure, why not? So I'll do it. And he's trying to throw me into that. It was going to be the main event. The guy was like 15 and 0 or something. Oh, shit. And the commission's like, nah. How many fights you had? None. I just the first time. Oh, look at Nick. Like, what are you doing? But I, Nick saw I was disappointed, so he's like, why don't you just go home and train? You know, go get ready, and, and then I'll, I'll bring out my next show. So, okay. And I went, and the weirdest thing was that the week before, my old karate school had called me in because there was a black belt coming in to f- spar. And I went in and sparred with John Hackleman <laughs> the week before. And I remember, I remember after that, man, at the, the, everyone in the door, oh, you kicked his butt. You know, we were doing light contact ahead, but... I'm like, what, what fight were you watching? Like, this guy just, I just handed me my ass. You know, like, and, I, and I, he'd give me a card and it said world champion kickboxer on it. I was like, oh, maybe I'll go see this guy. So I went up to see him. I don't know if you ever, ever hear that story. I, I, used to, I went up there. So I go up to see John. So I was like, oh, yeah, come up and we'll go spar. He brought this guy, Jesus Sanchez, which is another black belt in the area, came up with us and was watching. And we were up in his. He had like an eight up on the in the pit up on the up on the you walk up these big old these 
dirt road, go up there, to go up there, and you're up there in, a, in the like an 800 square foot like room with like a couple bags, and we put on boxing gloves. I said, well, let's, let's just box, and um, I, and I and I've done karate my whole life. I've never I've never done just boxing, just hands in my whole life. Always been able to kick, so I was like, this is a little weird, but okay, no problem. And then, and he proceeded to hand me a beating Heckerman? for 19 straight minutes. Finally, uh, Jesus says, like, hey, can we stop now? Can we stop? I just can't watch this anymore. I, you just beat the, the piss out of me. And then we got done, and then we went down, and uh, it was started raining. And I'd come up on my motorcycle, and, uh, and, I, and he's like, uh, are you going to come back tomorrow? I said, yeah, I, I'll be back. You know, want to train? All right, um, here, here, take my truck then. Give me a brand new truck. I'm, I, I'm, I'm good. I, I got to just put, put a bag on or something. He goes, no, no, push that in the, in the garage. Coming back tomorrow, right? Here, take my truck. Threw me truck keys up, up at John's house probably six days a week for, you know, the next five or seven years or whatever. Whatever it took to, until he started, uh, until he actually opened the gym. Mm -hmm. Yeah, then we had, then we had, I had my gym and he had his. So Were you a black belt when you spar him in karate? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I was, I was black belt. I, I won one our nationals for our, our, our style. So I was like, hard style. I was a, a, a good. good Karate fight. Is it fighter. Kempo karate? No, Kempo was with John. Did. That's uh, why now I got uh, a black belt with Kempo from John. Uh, it was Koi Khan karate. Though. It was my first style. Oh, uh, okay. so like a hard style karate. But it was, we, you know, the, the gym I, I fought out of it. You know, a lot of guys, we had a lot of blue collar guys that liked to bang. So we get in there and beat each other up for, you know, going there every, you know, uh, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays, going there and spar and beat the hell out of each other. Yeah. So, but who did you do your jujitsu with? Because I remember John, uh, uh, John Lewis. Oh, that's right. That's right. Yeah. Right away, like um, when I actually the same thing. Yeah. Funny thing is, I, I realized this after my career that it was actually Nick that got me into both. So I was close to like going back and getting a real job. I did graduate in accounting, and um, and I talked to John. I'm like, look, if we're not even trying to make real money, I mean, I like I'm having a lot blast to go around, keep fighting for five hundred bucks here, five hundred bucks there, kickboxing, but. You know, and, and bartending, but this is my, you know, I got to, I got to, I'm getting a lot of pressure from my grandma to go get a real job and, you know, people around me. So I'm, I'm thinking about getting a real job. And right at, right, right after I had that conversation with John, Nick called me up and said, Hey man, Elvis says you're a pretty good wrestler. Um, do you want to do a mixed fight? I said, sure. Why not? I'll, I'll, I'll try it. So we, we, we had started, it was like, it was in Vegas, it was at the Orleans Hotel. He was going to throw in three fights on a kickboxing card. Mm. And I was, luckily I was the first fight of the night, because after my fight, they, they threw, called off the other two mixed fights, um, <laughs> that the commission did. Um, but uh, it, you know, and I, it was supposed to be open hand palms. Oh, yeah. You know, like that guy, but yeah, I, they, they changed it to slaps. Uh -huh. Like, what, what, after we got there, I'm like, well, are you okay with that? I'm like, well, I guess, I'm, I'm already here, yeah. but whatever. And I wound up kicking the guy in the head and, and knocked. I mean, he, he, went, he just slapped. <laughs> what did he um, do? He went straight down. <laughs> he folded him. <laughs> he folded him. Yeah, yeah. He just kind of. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, someone from, uh, asked me if I wanted to fight in the UFC and I uh, said, okay, yeah. How, how many fights did you have before you went to the UFC? That was it. The Panthers on the first. One, and then you went to the UFC? Uh, yeah, I was fighting. A f I was an alternate for a four man tournament, the Henderson one. Now, I tried to talk him out of it, too. Like, he came, hey, man, my leg really hurt off that first round. Uh, what should I do? I'm like, you know what? I, I don't think you should fight. Uh, I was an alternate. I was trying to, <laughs> I was trying to get him. Psycholog right? Psychological <laughs> warfare. Hey, well, yeah. well, we, well, we got, we got, we got a thousand, I got a thousand bucks to show up and fight the alternate fight. But like, if you want, it took second, it was, it was 10 grand. It was like 20 grand if you want it. So I'm like, you know, if, if he, if he pulled out, I would have got 10 or 20 grand. Yeah. So that would be perfect. But. But yeah, that's what I, and uh, after that, I, when I, after the the first one, uh, John, I met John Lewis. Oh. Uh, Nick had hooked me up with him because I was got got in the UFC, and he started teaching me, helped me with uh, learn jiu jitsu. Before that, I was with Scott Adams, was my partner. Like he he we done a few little things, but just uh, I actually Mark Lehman had a class with it. I went to one of his classes. Marco who awesome went to a class. Yeah, the first thing down at Beverly Hills Jiu Jitsu. Yeah. Well, hey, what I want to know is how did how did Dana talk you into coming to Pride, like a whole nother organization to come over there? Well, I uh, I knocked out Randleman within like a minute eighteen, and they and Pride had come and asked for um, somebody to represent them. I'd like to go. They need someone to fight 
in, it was like three weeks later. And I'm like, uh, and they're, they, they wanted, they wanted to ask if I could fight, they asked them and they, we had a three way negotiation cause I had, uh, so I had a fight deal with the UFC that it depended on if I won over there. If I, if I won over there, then it went here, here, here. And if I lost over there, it went kind of here, here, here. Yeah. So, um, they just, we just redid a contract or asked me if I want to fight. It was perfect. I didn't, you know, I went mid 18. I didn't, didn't get hurt. Nothing. And it really, I took a week off. You know, put a game plan in for a week and went and fought. Did, was you aware that Dana White? And that was guy. Well, that was guy. But that was for Guy Messer. It was the first time I went over there. Oh, that's right. That's right. I forgot about that one. Yeah, first was, Pride fight was against Guy. Yeah, yeah. yeah it was funny. The other funny one there too. I went out there riding. I'm getting in the car back with the. With, I was in out with uh, Random and uh, and and those guys out there, and I was driving right going the way back to the airport. And he looks at me and goes, "Man." I was pretty bummed you knocked me out, but uh, man, you're pretty tough. <laughs> it's like, it's like, it was like I was all pretty upset about it. I guess after I knocked out uh, uh, what's his name, he's like, oh, oh okay, well, I guess you're tough, so no yeah. worries. <laughs> I mean, is it, it, is it weird for a guy he, you fought to just be nice to you after you fight him? I, no, I mean, I, 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 I'm sure I, and him, I, I actually, a guy, you know, I'm talking about a quick, quick learner. I talked about, we talked about to do like a suicide, like a spin out of a, out of a triangle. Yeah. Before one of the fights in uh, that, that thing, and he went out, got, got in that twice and spun out of it, because he's, he's so strong and athletic. But he got, he got caught in it twice, he got spun out of it, and then I, I, I cornered him for. I was in the corner. He came to me, um, him and uh, Coleman. Yeah. Both, hey man, um, man, what do you think our game plan should be? Like, um, it's the night before the fight, bro. Like, <laughs> man, well, one was like he was fighting Fedor and uh. uh his name was fine. Crow Cop. Yeah. I, was a, corner, I, corner, I was actually in this corner when they knocked out Crow Cop. Wow. Oh, for real? Yeah. Oh, I, was, I, was, I, I wasn't where I was, wasn't worried. I was just out there. He's like, you want to walk me out? I'm like, sure. I'll walk out with it. He was the coolest guy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. He's cool. Yeah. Super down he's, there. Yeah. Just an athlete, man. Yeah. Those guys, they were kind of the old school. It was kind of, they, they didn't want to, they wanted to prove wrestling was, yeah. was the was the only thing. They just they didn't want to evolve. Yeah. I mean, I, I remember, I mean, I love Coleman, but I mean, he was the front, we were, hey man, uh, yeah, I'm going with the favorite, he has those leg locks. Can you show me how to, how to get out of those leg locks? Scott's like, yeah, sure. Uh, okay, put me in the leg lock. Put me in the heel hook. He looked at, and he looked at him like, um, oh, how do I do that? Like, I'm like, <laughs> Wait, how long have you been in this sport? You've been fighting for a long time at that, <laughs> that like, point. Me, yeah, I am like, and, yeah, you're, and you're a wrestler, you, you, have, you don't know, even know how, I mean, get, I get it if you don't want to do them because I didn't like. I just I didn't, anybody good leg locks. I just get out. I yeah. I start countering right away and get out because yeah. I don't I don't like playing games with guys that no. like to play those. No, and, and they fought with shoes on too back then. Yeah, oh yeah, fight. oh yeah. I would never fight somebody like Fedor with shoes on with wrestling shoes on. No way. Oh no! I, the first time I went back to to Cal Poly after after wrestling after fighting when I started fighting again, first time I went back and put regular. Cause I've been doing jiu-jitsu and wrestling without shoes on for a long time. Yeah. First time I got guy got in on my leg and I went to kick out the way I do uh, on the thing and I went, wow! I almost almost blew my knee. And I go, I was like, because they had the shoe. Yeah, it's a whole different I, game. Go, I, without the shoe, I can just walk my foot out. I can slip it out of anywhere. Yeah, but with the shoe on, it's like, yeah, oh, it oh, oh, wait a minute. Uh, uh, Tito Tito told us uh, the other day that it was you and him that invented that cage that wall walk. I, I had no idea. Yeah. We, no. Yeah, I used to train with Tito, and I learned. I used that shit in pride. Oh yeah, I, lo I loved it. Yeah, that, 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 I, I'd rather with wrestlers like a lot of wrestlers. The, the the cage makes it so like like I go, oh, I get him up against the cage, but hey man, the cage make, lets me not get taken down. Yeah. I used to use it not to get taken down all the time, and I, I was good at putting pressure on people and just making sure you you, you would know, drill it. Oh yeah, that's I worked that. That's I worked that all the time. Yeah, because you said that you were using that cage rock too. Yeah, I, I used it because I, I used to train with Tito, and I saw Tito doing it, and we started drilling it. And this whole time, I thought Tito made that up because I had never seen him before. And he said you, you and him. Uh, yeah, yeah, we, yeah, we used to work on that a lot. That saved me. That saved me a, a couple of different times. That 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 walk yeah. walk. I forgot about it yeah. over the years though. Yeah. I stopped using it over the years, but I used to I used to even do it in the ring. That you just walk yourself up the yeah, cage. Yeah, you can use the rope. You can use the ropes that way too. Yeah, I used to use the corner as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, uh, so would you guys? Would you and Tito or you guys that you were wrestling at the time? Would you look for different ways to drill to kind of give you guys a little edge? Or how did how did moves well, like that? We, we come did about? we did a lot of situational stuff like okay, you can start in this situation, bad situations, and and when you do a lot of bad situation drills, it's like you figure out how to get out of them. Got it. You know, yeah. and they, and and 
it's being able to work with guys too. Like Glover was great with it too. I love working with Glover because like you would be, he's always he was really good at like you know making you work for something, but you know giving a working speed, you know, yeah. and doing that stuff. So. Yeah. Bro, that dude, that dude, tough. I, I had no idea uh, Glover was that tough. I, I, oh, I found him. He hit, he hit me. It landed in the back of the head, though. But it's like the force. It dropped me to the ground. It su surprised me. I had to jump back up. I kind of underestimated him a little bit. I, I thought I was going to walk through him. Yeah. Well, you know, I think uh, yeah, he's man, he's tough, man. He, he, he hurt his shoulder uh, uh, against um, what's his name? Uh, was it John Jones? John Jones. Yeah. yeah. He hurt his shoulder in the first first round. Yeah. In that, in that fight, I think it would have been. A, a different fight. Jones is a dirty fighter. I think he probably did that shit on purpose, man. He tries to injure you, man. Yeah. He does, though. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, yeah, it's, yeah, it happens. Yeah. It's part of the game. Yeah, but so well, some people. It should be, but like, yeah. I, like, I don't intentionally try to hurt you. Like, no, I'm not not in, in an illegal way. Like, right. I, like if I if I hurt you, like doing it, uh, being fair, fair and square, no problem. Yeah, yeah, but I'm not trying to end somebody's career or yeah. anything like that. Like a yeah. shoulder injury like that, the way the way he did his shoulder, that can easily end certain people's career. You know? Yeah. Oh, I could see that. I mean, we see you training with a lot of veterans and a lot of like current day coaches that were UFC fighters like Glover, for example, right? Like we saw videos of you training with Alex and, you know, are you still actively involved in training fighters and kind of getting mean, people prepared? I, I, I like work. I'll work with anybody that wants me to really. I mean, I, they call me, I talk to him. I say, hey man, I can help with some of that wrestling stuff. Cause he, he was doing something. I thought he was doing some things that just were real, real, uh, some, Small changes that can be made real quick because I don't. I like trying. To, I don't like going to guys camp and trying to change a bunch of things because it, it's you know they're yeah. not going to learn it. They're not going to use it. They haven't done enough. But like the little things you can. Oh, because you if you see that that light bulb. Oh, you know head position. Oh, just don't let him get his head under my chin. Oh, okay. You know, teach him little things like that. So I think he really helped him with um, when he fought Jan. Yeah, because that's stuff I work with him. I, I mean, he never got around it. I, I wasn't work trying to help him with his striking. He probably helped me with my striking. You know, like uh, yeah, he's a, he's a stud kickboxer. Were you, know, you there? Were you there at the fight when he fought Adesanya? Yeah, I was, yeah. Uh, what did you know. think about that? Uh, he got caught, man. And that, they, they, the, both those guys got got lightning in their hands, man. Both mm -hmm. those guys can knock you out. So, you know, I I I could have done without the the. Uh, the antics afterwards, but I didn't see him. I, yeah. I saw him much later. Yeah. What, what, what you saw the, the Pereira fight? Yeah, you know, it was kind of like the rematch and Adesanya finally got his revenge, I feel like, and then and then it all hell broke. Uh, I, you know, I heard the story about, you talking about when he like fell down and stuff like that? Yeah. yeah. I, I heard the story about that. You know, I watch a lot of TikTok when I'm bored and stuff. Yeah. And <laughs> it was saying that uh, years ago when- Yeah, uh, I, yeah that's yeah. why I saw that too, but it, the kid was five. Yeah. At the time. Yeah. You got to yeah. grow up at some point. You, you, the you, guy that fight, you know, out of time. He, it's a kid. He, he, he was five. I think the kid was five or six. I mean, he was a little kid at the time he did it. And now he's, he's 10. His dad hasn't moved yet. We might, might want to wait till he moves at least. Yeah. <laughs> you know, make sure yeah. he's going to Yeah. yeah. yeah cause that was one of, like, I, mean, I remember a guy when guy was out, man. I was like, that was one of the, one of the few times, just two times in, in my fight. You're like, oh, come on, man. Move. He hasn't moved yet. He hasn't moved yet. Yeah. Move, please scared move, you? please move. Oh yeah, he's moving. Okay, good. Like yeah. you get scared though. Uh, a little bit. Yeah. You know, you're a little nervous. Yeah. Start getting a little nervous. The guy hasn't moved in a while. You're, you're like, like um, did I just kill this guy? <laughs> yeah, because yeah. that probably that probably fuck you up mentally. Like where you probably wouldn't be able to fight the same anymore. Can you imagine like you just doing your job and you and you accidentally kill somebody? I mean, but you guys go in there for sure hoping to kill this guy, right? No, no, no. Just, I, just beat them up, knock them out, win. Yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm going to. Well, I'm, I'm trying to. I'm doing throwing the sink, kitchen sink. I'm, I'm going after him. I'm yeah. trying to put him out. I mean, but I don't feel, I don't the, feel the, he the, ever the, held anything back. No, I mean, he the, wanted the, to kill the, 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 the over. I hope he's all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I can see that. I'm not, and I don't, and, I don't, and I don't honestly, even if I don't like him, I'd yeah, I don't mean literally kill him. You, you would love to just sit there and just take it and then just dismantle dudes. Like that was your style. Yeah, I feel like yeah. you just you didn't care who was. Well, in the I, ring. I but my my I was a very calculated fighter. I'm not. I wasn't a very emotional fighter, so I'm really calculated. But I I do see blood. You know, blood's like oh yeah, I see when some I can see when someone's eyes go. You're like okay, oh he's hurt. Yeah. I can I just need to land a good one, so I'll go after him. That's really. Have you ever fought some fighters you didn't like, like besides Tito? We know you didn't like Tito. What about Vanderlei? Did you? you I I never had a problem with Vanderlei. He was never a problem. I mean I. I know I that, that, I don't take I don't take any of that stuff personal. Like I like I know see Vanderlei was a guy. T, Tito was a, it set that me not liking Tito was something separate from, you know, it was other BS. It had not, it was personal stuff. Oh not, okay. It wasn't and that's not it's not a fight thing. It's like because I, I know what they're doing. They they're both him him and I got him and Vanderlei to come after me by winking at him. 
you know, both, both of them came at me after weighing because I went like that. They were staring, doing a big because they want they want you to feel intimidated. And I go, I winked at both of <laughs> them and it went off. They lost it because they tried to team up on you. No, 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 no. different time, different uh, time. Yeah, In front yeah, of, yeah. But they went, they go crazy because because now you're you're showing them. I, I you know, I'm not intimidated. Sorry. Yeah, they're trying. It's to like yeah. I remember Pele when I fought in uh, in uh, Brazil. He threw his shoulder into me in the locker room before the fight, before the weigh-in, before the weigh-ins, and I'm and there's nobody else there. It's like him and three guys and his guys. I'm like, um, I, I don't speak Portuguese, but we fight tomorrow. <laughs> tomorrow we get paid. I, sorry, I'm tomorrow. Can we wait till tomorrow? Yeah, sorry. I just want I want to get paid for it because I mean down there it was one thirty minute round, uh, bare knuckle, no no rules. I mean, you, this was after you, know, you fought in the UFC. Uh, after the first one I fought in the UFC, that was my second fight. Wow. Uh, Pele was a man. Do you know who yeah, Pele is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pele yeah. was a man back then, too. Did yeah, you beat him? Yeah, I beat him. One thirty minutes. After I 30 minutes, he caught me with that, uh, clipped me with a head kick in the beginning. I, I, and I, fell down, and I, I more slipped him, but I fell down. I got right back up. and Because he, he, uh, you know, like he, uh, like he, he was like, oh, no. Got back up. He jumped out of the ring twice. <laughs> they had that net, right? Yeah, I remember that. From the bottom yeah. ropes. Yeah. And I, at the end of that fight, I had him stuck in that net. And I'm looking at the guys like, I'm hammering this guy in the face. Uh, I'm hammering through the net. So it's like you're getting punched in the net. And I get blood dripping on my ass. It was pretty funny. It was did, you have to, did you have to change your, your game plan because it was bare knuckle? No, not really. I, I, I came from, I think about it. It's one of the, it's one of the really, my, I had a one open hand fight. I had the UFC fight, and this is my third one. And I came from a style where we, we use bare knuckles most of the time. I mean, we had like small, like these big, you know, Bruce Lee gloves for like heavy sparring. But but I was used to hitting bags with bare knuckles, and I was actually really proud after the after the fight. Three minutes, I had two big bruises right here and right here. You know, so I was hitting with the right part of my knuckles. So, yeah, that's the part you're supposed yeah, to be. Yeah, yeah. So but, I mean, I've, but I had and I stitched on this side, stitched on this side. But it was a thirty minute round. One thirty minute round. How was that? I never even fought. ten I, minutes is what I Yeah, you take you to ten five fives. I mean thirty minutes I was in I mean I was in great shape. I mean I was you know, I, I don't know, I got in great shape for it. I, we we practiced for it and got out there and it it went it went well. So I and I got a decision. Everyone I got got a decision. It was a little funny walking out because you don't hear all that stuff uh, rumors back then about Brazil. And how it'd be dangerous fighting there, and people would get riots and stuff. But I think that was more inner squad, like inner like two gyms would have a fighter, and then the yeah. gyms getting fights. You know, they because they were really kind of respect. They were really respectful to us. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I went out there, and it's funny because we went out. I get in the in the ring, and I was like, actually Nick Blomgren. He was actually my corner me for that fight. And he was out there, and we're sitting there, and I'm like, Hey, um, we everyone gets out, and then there's him and and the guy in the center is his manager and then me in my cor corner i'm like um hey nick how come uh his manager's still in the, in the ring and he's like uh I, I think he's the referee don't worry about it <laughs> <laughs> i'm like that's nice okay, that, all right that works <laughs> yeah you must really beat his ass if you got a decision oh. in brazil bro i, I just yeah because i think that's the only reason they that he didn't stop it because in the last couple of minutes i looked up i'm like what, you want, what else do you want me to do to this guy he's stuck in here I'm, he looked like you remember Martin when when he fought uh, Thomas Hitman Hearns? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's what yeah. his face looked like the next day at the, wow. at the hotel. He wow. walked in the hotel, I'm like, oh, fight. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, just black I'm, and blue. I was black and blue. It was, uh, yeah, uh, that's, it, that's, it, that's, it was tough, man. Yeah. It was tough. It's that's like the OG it. days of MMA right there. I, I think I remember seeing clips of that fight years ago, but you know, that's that was so long. That was that's that's been like over twenty five years. Ninety eight. Oh gosh, that was thirty years. Wow. 98. No, so, yeah, it's like 26 that's, years. Bro, that's the year I graduated high school. 25 years? No way. Yeah. No, that was, that was 98. When you were training, I mean, we know the story kind of all of you guys training together, and we kind of learned a little bit about that, and I think most of the fans know. I didn't, I didn't train. He trained with Tito. No, I don't think we, no, him no, I don't had, think we, did, no. we never trained together. You guys didn't train together. No, because remember, I came after him and Tito was was training. I, I came to Team Punishment after he was there. Got I, was it. After, I was there before, yeah. There before. And then how, how, how long were you there before you left at Team Punishment? Um, well, I, I was, I was just actually, the way it started was Scott Adams came down before he fought, um, Frank Shamrock and he ran into Tito and had leg locked Tito a bunch of times. And, and so he was coming back down to help him out, help him teach him how to defend leg locks because of, because Frank was supposed to be good at him. So, um, and he said, hey, should I just bring Chuck down? Should I bring Chuck down and spar with you? And, 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 and so that's how it started. I came down and started 
training with them and doing stuff. And, Got it. And, and and really, I was more, more a sparring partner for the most part. Got it. And but just, I just getting was, back then. You got to go get work, you know, from different people and good people and in your division. So so for like, a few years, it was good. You guys were good. You guys were just we, training we, were, we were good training partners. I mean, I mean, he makes sound like we were great friends. I mean, I, I mean, he. You know, I always slept on my couch. I slept on your couch because you wouldn't pay for a hotel room. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Tito. Tito. Have you seen Tito. Us? <laughs> yes. I'm sorry. Poor Tito. <laughs> but, but, you know, I, I, was I was fine. I was happy. Like, when he came out, he stayed. You know, when yeah, he came up yeah. with us, he stayed in one of, yeah. one of my buddies at the house. So, yeah. you know. You know, we train and we and we train together. That's that's so. You know, so with but it wasn't. There was never a like. Oh, we're not gonna fight. And, and I always laugh because like the fight right before, um, about when I brought out Bob Lou and he fought Ken. Yeah, he said when he gets done with Ken after I won, went in and won the fight on uh, the one that was on uh, Fox or whatever. Uh, the and I I went I went out, I went out and fought, I went out and fought I went out and won the fight and he came in and said he was gonna kick my ass after he was done with Ken. And promoted his cat fight with Ken, so and then I, and all of a sudden after I, after the fight after he beats Ken, he's like, "Oh, we can't. I don't know if we're gonna fight. We're gonna go maybe fight Pride. We get more money. Like, uh, he's like, all of a sudden he didn't want to fight anymore." Mm. Uh, I didn't. See, I, I didn't yeah. know all that. I was on the. Yeah. I was on the outside looking in and stuff back then. And I just heard the stories because I came. I well, came. Yeah, I mean, he tried to make a big. His whole thing was he was trying to make a big thing that it was like. I mean, if you listen to him back then, it was like he, he took me out the street, taught me how to fight, and I turned on him. You know, like we're great friends. Like, I, look, man, I came down to help you out. Like, I showed up when you needed a sparring partner in Vegas. I came out, you know, for Yuki Kondo. I came out and bought Southpaw for you. Did you get paid? No, I wasn't getting paid. No, I was just coming out. I, I, I'll come out and work. You know, Dana asked me to, so I come out and uh, Dana, because Dana was managing both of us at the time. Yeah. Oh, Dana White was your manager? Yeah. Dana was White my... was managing you and Tito at yeah. the same time? Yeah. While you guys were fighting? Uh, uh, but before it was before they bought. The, yeah, before uh, he owned the uh, UFC. Before God. they owned the UFC. Yeah. Okay, so before Dana owned UFC, he was your man. I mean, we're kind of the reason he got he they got involved in the UFC. Wow. He was uh, he was kind of I think they were uh, him and uh, Lorenzo were talking about doing a boxing promotion, mm. and they decided, hey man, they're, I don't think they're running this right. Let's. Do UFC? That's that's cool. I didn't know that he was your manager. I knew that he worked with you guys, but I didn't know his. Yeah, I knew. I, I knew that. I uh, I know you and Dana had a real good re uh, relationship. That's why I was going to ask you about when you came to Pride and, and did the tournament with us, right? Yeah. And um, you, do you remember that bet that he made with Saka Kibara? Yeah. He, did, you you was aware well, of that? Yeah, I was aware of it. But his bet was he was trying to get him to have me fight Vanderlei first. Because he wanted me to fight Vanderlei, and I think he was gonna. I, I really think he would have pulled us. Like, just okay, we're done. That's right. all he wanted. He wanted me to fight Vanderlei. That, that, that would have been perfect. That would have been perfect for me because in that tournament, I had to fight you, and Vanderlei had to fight that damn Japanese guy. <laughs> oh yeah, I know. Did you? Did you know walk, yeah, I know. He was a little walkthrough. Yeah. Did you know the story behind that? They they set that tournament up for Vanderlei to win. Did you? Did you know that? Of course they did. Yeah, no. That's why Dana was trying to. He was trying to go to him in the. Uh, Having them fight me right away. Yeah, so um, they came. They came into my. They came into my locker room. Uh, everything was weird over there. Everyone always talks about it, but like everything's weird. Like I go over there. Oh yeah, I go over there, and they and the weigh in. Like you can't even be present for the other guy's weigh in. Yeah. Like so, I don't get to watch him weigh in. Yeah. Why can't I see him weigh in? Like not that I really want to. Not that I. No, you but, should though. But you should be able to. There's no know, commission they, over there. Because there's no. And then or like or like for. <laughs> First time I go over there, they, get, they have me do a drug test, right? The, the, the piss test. I walk in the room, <laughs> and the guy goes, hands me a cup. I goes, like, okay, where, where do you want me to do this? And I oh, go down that corner, go down the hallway, and go down there, take a right, and then a left. And so I'm like, really? I'm doing, and I go down, and I, I go in the bathroom, and I, there's no one there. It's just me. I'm like, okay, I guess I'll pee in the cup. But then I come back, and the guy, I come back, um, what do I do with this? Uh, put it over there. Oh, fuck. oh wow. <laughs> there you go. Uh, yeah, that's not getting tested. Yeah, no. <laughs> I'm, I'm, actually, I, part of me is like, man, I'm, I'm, I hope they don't test it. I, I, I say I did something I did because I'm, 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 I'm clean. I know I'm clean, but I don't have to. But you didn't know. They, they didn't test with steroids. Oh, no, they didn't test. No, I know. I, I assume. I, I mean, I knew because I, I know. I knew. Um, I, I knew guys. Like, yeah, I know, guys I know, yeah, I know, I know, and I knew. I mean, I knew Overeem's. Manager was a friend of mine. I met him. With, I met. I actually met over him back. I went back with John Lewis in like 2001, maybe. We were out. We out and went out and trained in uh, Holland. Mm. 
And I actually, I actually rolled with him. I, I'd actually rolled with him once before. Before you fought him? A long time before. Uh-huh. 2001. Uh-huh. When he was without, it was funny. He, he was actually pretty funny. He goes, hey man, he the first time I, I, I swept him and, and didn't, I didn't, I went for submission, didn't get it. And he goes, man, he, you got submissions on a video game. <laughs> no, on the first day, I thought you were a kickboxer. I did, I did it again one for another. Man, you got submissions on a video game. I'm like, what? <laughs> he, he, was pre- he was preparing to fight you by studying you in a video game. <laughs> no, he, no, he was. They, uh, we weren't. There was any talk of, talk of us fighting yeah. at that point. I was. It was early. I, it might have been 2000, 2001. Yeah. At uh, that point, when you came to the UFC and you, uh, you know, had this like fire and ice thing going on with Tito and you know you had the fire shorts you had the iced out Chuck Liddell shorts you were the ice man and the whole world loved you guys and you guys were on top of the world what was the what was the vibe with that did like Tito put that together with the shorts and the design and kind of go to you and say yo let's do this and no he had his own thing he had the fire thing already yeah and um and actually but he did uh it was what are, what are his, guys, his guys helped me uh, the like shorts. Was, was making making shorts on yeah. one of the guys down down in Huntington was like hey why, why don't we make you some ice man shorts and then they there was a lot of different options and i like wanted the the, uh, the high schools yeah i thought that looked cool yeah, yeah. that was legendary it was so legendary i mean yeah. still today it's like the most legendary thing you got the fire shorts the ice men shorts and then you got the rampage Big chain, howling, walking. Yeah, I, had the, I had the camo trim on my shorts. Yeah, you did. Yeah, With the yeah. Boost Mobile logo. Oh, Those yeah. are my favorite shorts. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, you guys had like a lot of opportunities to make money though back then because you got to put logos all over your shorts and banners. And, it you was know. Yeah. yeah if you, well, if you could hustle, that was a nice thing too. Like, it was like, it was nice. That was a nice thing. Like, because in the beginning, like, I had a few sponsors that just, Nice guys that that had that they're not gonna make any they're not gonna make any money off having being on my shorts. I just gotta say that's my guy. I got a short. Yeah, and I, I gave him five thousand dollars and put it. Let him, you know, so yeah. he can train and and do stuff. And you know, but you know, you can't. You, you lost a lot of that once. So, that but they, before, like when they went to like you had they had to pay something. I that was kind of at the end of my when I stopped when they they, they had to, the, I think the sponsors before they went to the, the Reebok and they, they had to pay like a oh, s- man, yeah. certain amount to the UFC and Rampage then Rampage got Rampage got his deal pulled yeah yeah I'm the one that that brought Reebok over there they were supposed to sponsor me and, and Dana was like I don't got no deal with Reebok I don't get, you can't wear it I'm like what the fuck so that's one reason why I left and went to Bellator that whole that whole thing was all fucked up I, I hated that they took sponsorships from fighters because now everybody got to look the same and stuff and I, I didn't like that yeah, I, I liked it better with the with the with the, I mean, with the having unique. Yeah, shorts. unique style. We, we definitely showed. made you guys like characters. Yeah, because after our generation, when, when UFC got e- even more popular, uh, the guys was making more money uh, out of sponsors. You know how like some athletes, like uh, basketball players, they some of them probably they make the top ones. They make more money off endorsements than they do from playing basketball. Yeah, yeah. And I was thinking like, oh, MMA is going to get like that. That's oh, where yeah. MMA is going to go. And then the UFC. You know, stopped it with that damn Reebok shit. In in like the sponsorship era, and when you guys were making money, there's obviously a lot of like you know pressure on you guys because you guys were kind of like holding the the league and the sport on your back. And you were like famous for going out and kind of just living your life and didn't really care. Like you kind of lived by your own terms. Man, Chuck know? was rock star. MMA. Yeah, yeah. You kind of lived by your own terms. <laughs> what what was that like? Did you not care? Did they just know like, yo, that's Chuck. Leave him alone. Let him do what he does. Yeah, well, you know, I, yeah, I wasn't. I mean, I. I, I got it together. I t- did all my stuff. I mean, I, I remember people, th- some people always started to talk trash about different stuff, but I, man, I, 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 when I went into training camp, I was in training camp. And I, you know, I, I didn't train during training camp. I didn't do, didn't, I, I, I mean, sometimes I'd go out sometimes, but I stayed up late. Like, I, the way I used to be, um, my, my time, like, I was fighting at nine o'clock at night. So I wanted nine, nine, nine thirty. So I, I want that to be kind of, I don't want to be that to be when I'm going to bed. My body's not, I don't want my body being ready to go to bed. So I go to sleep between one and two, uh, all through camp. You know, so Just I mean, get so, your body so, aligned. That's cool. so my body's used to, so cause your body starts releasing chemicals that go to sleep, help you go to sleep and I, I get ready and it takes a little bit of time to adjust your body. Yeah. So I, I, you know, I, I, I would go to sleep about two. It would really screw me up the new way of cutting weight that I like. That would have that would have oh, yeah. messed me up having to get up and make, make weight at eight o'clock in the morning. Yeah, I would have been so mad. Oh, yeah. So I had it down to a science, man. I get up at about eleven. I work out a little bit you know, with plastics on about one, and then I'd be done. I, I didn't. I, I cut about eight or ten pounds. I didn't like cutting a lot of weight, water weight. Yeah. 
So I just diet, diet down and get down to where I'm, I just cut, you yeah. know, that, that, that last thing. So I mean, that would have really killed me to have to get up at eight o'clock in the morning because, you know, now you're, because then it's hard to go back to sleep before you go after you, and then you gotta, you know, go after you, after yeah. you cut weight. And then you just made weight and you're eating it, and then it'd be hard to go back to bed. Yeah, I don't know if I could do it either, but now. It's too much. Yeah, it's too much. Too early in the morning for me. Really? Yeah, I don't. I don't like in a fight camp. It's just. I. It's just. It's just weird. Like I don't. I, and what? So are you trying to make it easier for people to cut more? Or give, uh, encourage them to cut more water weight by like making it giving them more I, time to recover. I mean, I don't. know. Yeah, I, this is what I thought. I thought they were trying to give you more time to rehydrate. Yeah, that's but, what I thought. Yeah, that's what that's what it is. But that, that also encourages you to, to if you can, if you have more time to rehydrate, you can get you can cut off. Do more. Yeah, but you gotta sleep. You gotta you gotta cut weight before you go to sleep that way. That, that's to say. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I don't want. I don't want to cut. I don't like holding the water off that long. Yeah. For me, I, like I said, I I had it down to the science. I I I I, I do it. By, I just because I didn't want to be be off. I do it by one, uh, one, like by one one thirty. Yeah. And then we're weighing in at three, and we weigh in at like three thirty or whatever, and and so I only have to hold the water off for two hours. Got it. So my body's really not that depleted once because I, I lose we lose I lose eight to ten pounds of water all the time. Yeah. When I'm when I'm training, you know. So, you know, that's not 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 a big deal if I get to rehydrate yeah. that quick. What's the most you had to cut before a fight? Oh, 19 and a half. <laughs> 19 and a half pounds. Yeah, it was a day of weigh-in and I was doing a catch weight. So it was the first time I'd been in, at 95s in a long, long time. Uh Steve Heath, actually. Uh, um, How do you lose that much weight? Water. I mean, I just, I, I, I cut, it was day of weighing too. I had to weigh in at noon. They made me wait till noon to step on a scale. Was it the same day of the fight? Day of the fight, yeah. That's, that should be illegal. Yeah, I mean, but, but I, what happened was they moved, it was back in the day. So we, they moved the fight uh, three weeks later, like after we scheduled it. And we were getting there, getting there last minute, they moved it like three weeks or two weeks. And we'd scheduled the pit, it scheduled up for after the fight. Uh, Hawaii trip, mm. so all my training partners are going to bought tickets, and we all bought tickets to go to Hawaii. So we, and we're all going to be there. So we was, okay, let's just train over there. So we went over and started training over there with Egan and some of the guys over there. Oh yeah, and um, and we trained over there, but I was supposed to lose another, you know, I was supposed to lose another five pounds while I was over there. And instead, I put on another five pounds. So I, li- <laughs> I, li- I like locomocos, and I like a spam masubi, and I wasn't stepping on a scale. So, so, so now instead of being, it's going to be in, instead of being uh, ten pounds over, you know, and losing, I, mean, I was fifteen over. I was, instead of losing five, you know, five pounds being ten pounds over. Now I've I've gained five, and now I'm twenty pounds over. So, so yeah, I wasn't very smart. So, but yeah. you know, I was, I was cramping warming up for that fight. Like, but I it just it turned out well. That's, that was suck to, to have to cut that much weight and and fight the same day. They tried to make me do that against Sakuraba. I said, no, nah, fuck no. Nah. There was no weight class. Huh? What's the most you cut? That was 26 pounds. In one day? Yeah, when I fought. 26 Sakuraba, pounds. When I had to fight Sakuraba. Wow. Uh, that's, I mean, I mean it, it, you can do it. It's just, it's not fun. No. It's not fun at all. It's dangerous, too. It's dangerous. It, it, it can be dangerous, too. Like, you can't, your body starts shutting down. It's for sure not healthy for you doing yeah. that over and over again. They were trying to get me to lose, like, uh, I think close to 30 pounds, right? And so I had to trick them. I had to, I had to lie like I didn't, like I, I was done. Like, they, they wasn't happy until I told the guys, I was like, fuck this, just carry me to the, to the scales. And I'm going to act like I can't fucking, you know, I'm like, <laughs> wait, carry me. Wait, because you didn't well, want to I mean, cut, didn't want but, cut them away. But, but they're like, it was like, there's like, they just, it was like kind of their, their whole, their, their rules. Their like stuff. lawless back then, huh? Yeah, it, it was, it was bad because it was no weight class. And then they, then they wanted me to do it the day of the fight. And they, they, they told me the, the day before, they were like, uh, and tomorrow you gotta, you gotta cut weight. We want you fighting at 90, 90 or something, whatever, uh, Sakuraba was. I was like, I'm like, whoa, 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 ain't no weight class. It says right here, there's no weight classes on the thing. They said, yeah, but we starting something new and, and you too strong, you too big for them. So you gotta, you gotta cut this way. I said, well, fuck it, call the fight off. I said, I'm not doing it. Then they're like, can you cut it today then? My, my, my guy was like, man, we came out with Japan. Go ahead, do it. I was like, man, fuck that. I was mad, but then so I did it. So I, it was hard. I had to go from hot to cold, hot to cold, sauna, and the Japanese guys getting mad at me, arguing with me in Japanese because I wasn't naked in the sauna. Because in Japan they 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 naked in the sauna, and I, I wouldn't care to be naked in the sauna with a bunch of Japanese dudes because I was going to pull my thing out and make it dark in there because I'm around a bunch of Japanese dudes. But it was just, I was going to do it just to shut them the fuck up. I'm like, ah, oh, this is what you want. Wave it all in the face. Ah, this is what you want. 
But I didn't do it because it was an old Asian lady back there cleaning up while these guys were naked. I was like, this is my first time in Japan. Respectful like, rampage. Uh -huh. Very respectful. <laughs> and I was like, I ain't feeling, and the lady, she wasn't that old. She was in her 40s. And what people don't know about me, she still could have got it because I like older women back when I was young. <laughs> and she wasn't bad. It's my first time in Japan. I was thinking about fucking everything. Like, <laughs> lean and mean, big. I'm sure you could have too. <laughs> oh, yeah. I was in shape back yeah. then. It's a different, if it's, it, it's like a different world though that I feel like that the current world of MMA is seen though. Like, you guys were really like in this unique era where fighting was more of this cultural, like, rock or element, kind of like almost WWE. Not that the, Fighting was fake, but that the atmosphere of these shows and what was going on now it's very systemized and kind of super professional. It's, it's really different now. I think I think most of the fighters now are fans. They're more fans than fighters like us. Like I think that we was like the like true fighters. Like we we did it because we love fighting and we want to do it. Oh yeah, what do you think? I think so too. Yeah, with a lot more. I mean, a lot of guys. We, 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 our time is you're a fighter. Most part, you're out there just to fight. You know, I love fighting. I love what I was doing. I was I, just, I was always a fighter. I liked I liked doing that thing. I liked that lifestyle. Uh, I loved it. So yeah, I th and I think so, you see, see a lot more. A lot of our guys are out here. You know, just you see a lot more. Like you see a lot of technicians. A lot of guys are just athletic. You know, really good athlete, athletes, and they go out and they're good at scoring points and, and winning yeah. fights. Yeah. yeah. Did you Did you have uh, any idea the impact on on me and your fight in the UFC? Like when I I hear stories from my friends and stuff back at home. Like people knew I was from Memphis, but they was all cheering for you. Oh. And then after after I fight, I got my house egged. Oh. People found out where I lived. Oh, I, mean, I remember one time, uh, uh, one of my buddies after after one of my fights, he goes, "Man, yeah, I, mean, I want money on you." I'm like, "Wait a minute, <laughs> what's my? Car? You were at my house. Wait, anyway, who's been here? Who's at my house? Because he was at my house watching the fight." The bunch, I let a bunch of people watch some people. Oh, he, was at your house. he was watching at my house. Who the hell was at my house watching me fight and was betting against me? <laughs> wait, wait, wait. <laughs> so was, he bet someone there. Somebody, 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 that's fucked like, up. How are you at my house drinking my beer, eating my food, betting against me? <laughs> nah, that ain't right. That ain't right. <laughs> what's, what's wrong with you? We got to get your circle of friends checked. That ain't right. <laughs> Chuck, what about that? What about that infamous story that you walked in a bar and you just KO'd five dudes? Is that true? I don't know what story that is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I, I mean, I, there's a there's a video on that on YouTube. You want me to pull it up? You want to see it? I don't. I don't know. I don't, I don't know if you want to see it. I, I don't know. This might be one of the things that. Yeah, we might have to take this out. You, oh, I don't know. I, I don't know. You don't remember? It's possible. I mean, look, I mean, I've been I've been in quite a few street fights, but uh, you know the one of the funniest ones was like you know like the Lee Murray one. Oh yeah. So you don't know that. Yeah. People always ask me what happened. I, I don't know. You I was like, there. I was there. I, I was involved. Yeah, completely. I came up and uh you know little Damien. Yeah. He attack he double legged kid guy gets gets a, gets a car. And when I came up I looked I looked to the I guess Tito and, and Lee Murray off to the right. I looked to the left and saw Damien all shit ran over there. So I'm running over, started throwing people off him. He's always the first to fight. Yeah, I'm, I'm always I'm throwing these guys off him and like just trying to break it up. And some guy hits me in the back of him. Oh, you know you didn't. So I start walking at him, taking my watch. I take my watch off because first first ever nice watch I ever had. I had an Omega watch. I didn't want to get beat up in those street. So I took it off and put, so I'm walking this guy my hands out, put it in my pocket, put it up and then crow out, just drop. <laughs> so I, I I mean. Uh, legend has it. I think legends. I think legends had it up to about seven or eight guys. I dropped that not fight, but I was like four or five. But but I was. It was just. A, it was one of those things. I'm used to big street fights and big brawls, and these guys are all fighting. And, and if if I didn't know you, or you, and you're hitting somebody I knew, I just come up and just just drop you. So like I was dropping guys right now. The guy with the spinning back kick. Uh, <laughs> um, but I mean, and then but the funniest part was. So when, where was when, it? When, when, yeah, in England. Yeah, it was, at, it was after uh, uh, the the brawl where Royal Albert Hall, the, the, the first one. I was Is it when Tito fought Elvis? No, that was Australia. No, my bad, my no bad, my it bad. was um, it was when um, um, Matt Hughes and uh, Carlos Newton. Oh, that there, yeah, yeah. 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 So, so it was. We were all in the same. It was, we used to always be at the same after party. Like there was just one, you know, for the UFC. So all the fighters the same one. And we were coming out of China White. It was the club. And we were coming up, and I, like I said, I went left, and they went right. But so after all that, all that, there was a big fight, and it, it, had, it had something to do with uh, one of Tito's buddies was jumped on Pat Milch's back. One of Pat Milch's guys knocked him out, and then Lee Murray's guys um, went up jumping in on Pat Milch's side. 
which is all just a big misunderstanding. Uh-huh. See, I wish I would have been there. I like big brawls like yeah, that. So, so yeah, but I, I used to love that back from a kid. I was like, hey, we're back. So I was just, <laughs> hey, we're you know, back. <laughs> right. So, but the cops showed up. Oh, so that big, you know, okay. the cops start showing up. And so, um, so this guy, when I was doing an interview for um, when 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 Jones and uh, Glover were fighting, and the guy goes, one of the guys on this, you know, that block, bunch of people, one of those shotgun interview things. Mm. He goes, man, I've been waiting 11 years to ask you this question. Um, I just got to know, did you know that girl you walked off with when the cops showed up? Because <laughs> as soon as the cops showed up, I, I, I grabbed the first girl. I said, nope. Well, I grabbed the first girl I saw. I said, hey, you want to go to some lunch? And walked, just walked right by the cops. I was the only guy not detained that was in that fight. That's why I didn't hear. That's why I didn't hear nothing about Chuck Ben. Wow. I was the first guy. I was on. I just. He's all. I was there. I saw it that night. I just. I had to know. Do you know that girl you walked off with? <laughs> no. Nope, wow. No idea. I just been a, experienced. The cops show up. You're gone. I was there, just trying to help people, my friends, when I get hurt. So when the cops show up, they can take care of help making sure no one gets hurt. I'm out. You know, I wasn't getting in trouble. That means he didn't have no marks. Yeah. yeah. Nothing. nothing. Just walk right by. Quick little seven body count on the floor in the streets of England, and I'm out. Yeah, it's more like five. five. But, they, they the got, fight but he's got to seven. Yeah. I think so. <laughs> yeah. We got but, it out of <laughs> so Lee, uh, Yeah, that, 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 I really done something. Lee, it was Lee Murray and those yeah. guys. And remember, and then Lee Murray went and robbed that bank. The, the heist. He did that heist. Is that, is that a crazy. true thing? Yeah. What is that? He's he like uh, 80 million pounds or something. Uh, something was it crazy. gold or something? I don't know. I don't remember. But, he, yet, but it was it was like eighty million pounds. It's the biggest heist in, in UK history. He's still wow. locked up. Or so he in yeah, Morocco. Yeah, got him in Morocco. Yeah, he escaped from Morocco and yeah. he got locked up for something else there, and he's still locked up. Yeah, yeah. I have this video it's, of of Bruce Buffer talking about it. Oh, that, yeah, yeah. That's, was, that's the one he's talking about. Yeah. Was he there? Yeah, he was there. Everybody was there. Like it was like it was like after party for that 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 UFC. No. Oh. That was Tito's buddy. who was on Pat's back. He's just a, a, not a fighter, just a, 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 playing around their friends. Uh, but it was um trying to think of who, who the guy was that dropped him. Um, it was another fighter, one of, one of the military fighters. So he thought that it was real. Yeah, he thought it was real and dropped him. And then, I was drinking. Yeah, oh, well, was yeah. And then um and then and then Pat and then uh, uh what's his name and, and his gang uh, Lee Murray and his guys all the guys from his gym were there and. Pat had done a seminar at their gym, so they just jumped in on his side because they wanted to fight. You know, they're, they're like, oh, hey, street fight, let's go. So the whole thing started because two friends were playing around. Yeah, playing around the street, and someone decided to, someone that, I was, and the funny thing was the guy, I mean, it was one of, but it was one of, I forget his name, um, is it Tony Fricklin? One of Tito's boys. One, one of, no, one of, uh, one of Tito's boys on his back. He wasn't a fighter. He was Got it. a regular, normal guy. Yeah. Uh, but he got he got dropped by uh, by one of uh, Milton's guys, <laughs> and then Milton grabbed his guys as soon as I, like threw him in a cab and just got out of there. The rumor is that Tito got dropped. Did he get dropped or he got or he slipped? Okay, I, look, doing dress shoes on fighting on the street, and all I can say is, well, I didn't see it, so whatever happened happened. But when I turned around, he was so when the cops showed up and I looked back, he, people were holding him back from chasing after the guy. Mm. So. I mean, going trying to get to to what's his name. So he was he, if he if he if he got dropped, it was his flash lock down. It definitely yeah. could have been a slip. Yeah, it, but, and it's, yeah. And, it, and it's a, and it, it was most likely a cold cock too. Yeah, I don't yeah, think yeah, they squared yeah, up yeah. and went. You know, it's was not. It, like, was that the, I mean, he's a one seventy pounder. I mean, I don't. I mean, it would, I don't. Th- and and Dino's not easy to drop. So yeah. no, you know, it's not. But it's not a. You know, I don't think. I mean, but when you're drinking though, you're. It's, it's, it's drinking and, and you're, I like I said, you're using dress shoes on 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 on, on pavement. It's not that not the best. No, because I can. You know. Yeah, I mean that 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 story is pretty infamous. Was that the only time you and Tito ever kind of like fought together? Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. the that's like the the two forces I, joined I, together. But I didn't even know. Honestly, I didn't even know he was in the fight. I can tell afterwards. Really? Yeah, yeah. I, I, because I, I came up and the first thing I looked left and I know, and my buddy was Damian was double, had a guy double against his car, and three guys hitting him in the back. So was that your best street fight you ever been in? No, no. <laughs> What's the best street fight you ever been in? I, I think uh, one of the well, I've had been quite a few funny ones. But the funniest one I think I, I was um, we were in uh, Isla Vista because my buddy of mine from uh, Santa I went Barbara. Back, and Santa, I'm from Santa Barbara, so oh, wow. I went for a home for a weekend. We're on Island, and I got a fight out there. But um, 
I get to rest, I get my wrestling practice, and one of the guys the wrestling goes, "Hey man, by any chance were you uh, you on Island Vista this weekend?" Well, yeah, why? Is a no chance you jumped off a car and kicked someone in the head, dude? Is there? <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah. How do you know? <laughs> oh man, I knew it had to be you. He's like, but like, yeah, because we you I, Superman kicked the dude off a car. I, I well. What, well, look what happened. <laughs> so I was like, I was, I was talking to this girl, and these five dudes walk up. Like I, my, I was actually out with my two brothers, uh, but they were, they were a little, little further back, walking down the street. So I stopped talking to this girl. And these five dudes walk up and they start giving me. Sh- I'm like, oh man, come on, guys, I don't want, I don't want a problem with you guys. And they're like, um, yeah, sorry, you got a problem with us. Well, look, man, come on, just just leave me alone. Just, I'm, I'm talking to this girl. I think, well, then just walk on then. No, <laughs> I'm, I'm, no, I'm not going anyway, bro. Like it's, uh, I'm not, I'm like, so, well, oh, yeah, they got a big thing. And then my brothers run up. Now, my two brothers, my, my, my little brother is 16 at the time, I think. My, my other brother, I was probably 21. My other yeah. brother's probably 20. He runs up. My other brother's nuts. Okay, he's not as good a fighter as me, but he's nuts. Um, so these guys are talking to me, and finally one of them says something, and my brother, shut the fuck up, you know, like, and then the guy goes, says, F you, like, back to him. I, and my brother, you don't get that out of your mouth. So my brother, you know, he, he won't, he starts saying that, and my brother goes to hit him. And the idiot standing in front of me turns to hit my brother. So I just was down. <laughs> so, I, so then I grabbed the, the guys, the two guys, and I push them through. And my brother, my other brother's over there. And now my other brother's fighting, fighting the guys. And then, but my pr- brother, my crazy brother, he's, he's st- I mean, we're fight, fighting a couple of guys, more than one guy. So I'm, I'm th- I went through the car, in between these cars, and I got this guy, I, I look back, and this guy's running, like, 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 like he's trying to do a kickoff on my brother because my brother's still on top of the guy he dropped. He's still on top of the guy hitting me and the guy in the head. I'm like, dude, uh, we need your help. You know, get up. <laughs> you know, he's still kneeling. Like, so this guy's, and I'm like, I go, oh no, I didn't know. I, the only, I'm, all, I got, I'm about to jump off in this car and, and go. So I ran across the car, jumped up, you know, flying sidekick, got him in the face. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> Not, I mean, I was, I mean, he was just like a, like a, like a 180. <laughs> But this is before you was a, a fighter. Yeah, I was. Yeah, I was twenty. So you 21, just always 20, loved fighting. Yeah. And you then, and, then, and then just, always loved fighting. And then my brother was over there fighting. It was funny. He was fighting, had two guys hitting him. and He's just sitting there trying to fight. He wasn't a very good fighter back then. But he's just sitting there getting hit. And I ran up and and, and I dropped this one guy with a, with, a, with an elbow. <laughs> and then he went down and got back up. And I was like, I'm all oh, man. I'm like, okay. And I was gonna go again. And I go wait a minute. Oh no! Well, he's he's gone. I, was, I didn't hit him again. He was like he he had no. I was went up and started touching uh, his face. I'm all, oh no, <laughs> he's okay. But he stood up. He stood up. <laughs> he and he's like standing like this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh, no. Oh, you we, gave him a soft touch. I, I to said, the cheek. I said, cheek. I'm like, uh, no, we will leave him here. Oh. You know, I, don't, I don't have to hit him again. We're gone. Oh, check different. No, I I mean, I'm not gonna tell no, the whole I think story. That, I think he's that, a wild man. I was in a club, and <laughs> I'm not gonna tell the whole story. But we we're walking out of a club and. Someone was saying something to Chuck. Chuck, I think, was maybe having a beer or something, just enjoying himself, but he's wearing a suit. Someone said, like, what you going to do in that suit or something like that? We were at Hall- in Hollywood. And I said, Chuck, like, no, we're having a good night. I'm young. And I was wearing a cool suit, too. And then the guy said something to me. And I'm like, I'm not going to do anything, Chuck. Chuck's like, oh, yes, we are. And I was like, no, we good. We good. And he's like, no, we're not. And he just walks to the guy. And, you know, yeah. Blah, 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 blah. And then Chuck's like, yo, we got to get Uber. And I'm like, why? He's like, we got to get out of here. I'm like, all right, cool. And we bounce. I'm like, Chuck, why you go do that? He's like, nah, we're not going to just leave and let that guy talk to us like that. I'm like, all right, I'm with you. But thank the Lord you were able to handle it for me. <laughs> <laughs> Chuck, don't play. Chuck, don't play. Even, at, even as he was getting older, and you know, I've known Chuck again since I was young, and I've had the blessings of knowing you guys for 10 plus years. This guy is always the same guy, same energy. Yeah, always. It's always. Always. Well. I have a good time. Yeah. We know you like to have a good time. I have this I have this clip. I kinda wanna watch you. It's a. it's Joe Rogan talking about you. I wanna kinda kinda see see your reaction to this.
<laughs> what 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 gave you that energy like in these ufc fights because you there's no one that's had that aura like this aura that you had in the ring like what where did that aura come from you were like i i you know i don't know i just i, I mean i'm just me i like that that's how i like to fight i like to end fights that's how, i mean i like i yeah. mean it's i still think it's funny to say people ask me you know like hey man are, are you uh and did you ever, do you ever know did you ever do jujitsu at all like I, yeah, yeah. I'm at a I'm at a purple belt since uh, I uh, I think uh, I think I got my purple belt in uh, uh, 2000 or, or 1999. I, think it was, I mean I, I mean I'm at a purple belt forever. I never I just never got anything bigger. But I always think it was funny going in Rome with uh I remember with, with one of uh, John's uh, John John Lewis's uh, brown belts. Uh, like about a year ago, and just came in and borrowed a gi. Cause I was just ran in, he was teaching a class somewhere, and I'm like, oh, I'll, I'll roll. Like, and I put a gi on and uh, let him borrow a gi. And so I just had a white belt on, and I was rolling with his brown belt, and I swept him a couple of times. He's like, what the? I, I, I didn't know you knew how to do it. Your coach is my coach. <laughs> like he's been co he's coached me for a long, a lot longer than he coached you. <laughs> like, so, I mean, I've been doing this since 98. So you know, I started ninety seven. I started training jiu jitsu. So you know, it's like I, I I did it. I just, I mean, the stuff the stuff I I mean, I was I was good at position. I was good at. I remember Glover getting upset. It was like man, when I was gonna fight Bobble the second time, and he's like, "Why does everybody keep saying if he gets you down, he can beat you? Like that guy can't beat you in a jiu jitsu match." <laughs> but I mean, I, I mean, I mean, I think I mean the guys like that they're the better. Like I don't think like Tito. Like, like Tito, I don't think Tito would beat me in a submission match. But he was, good but, but, he, but he was, he was well, but he was the style of wrestler I like to wrestle. Which is what? And just he's just a power wrestler, and he and, he, and he's got. I mean, but technically, I was, I, I was when we trained together. I took him down more than he, way more than he took me down. No way. Yeah. Oh yeah. I used to say just straight wrestling. He took me down twice. I think the whole time we trained together. No way. And wow. and, and none when, zero times when we were striking. But I, I get, I it frustrated the hell out because I take him. I was, uh, but he's just I was Did a swing. I like swing. Did you know that? No, no I, 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 was, I, was, I was a swing wrestler. That's why he didn't like want to fight me because he couldn't out wrestle me. So I, I was like, I like, I like to swing, uh, like swing and do angles on people. Uh, he's he like that power wrestler, and, and I do really yeah. well against power wrestlers. Yeah, he he, he likes that blast double and blast all. Yeah. And I'm, I do really well against those kind of guys. I don't get over. I, you're not gonna muscle me like that. I'm overpowering. I knew way. you was a wrestler, but I, I didn't know you were that good because I, I I wrestled Tito for years, and he's really good. I I I rarely took him down. I could take him down if we do MMA. But you know, I didn't start wrestling until I was seventeen. Yeah, no, he was a. Uh, but yeah, but yeah, no, he's. I think I think he he like he'll he'll submit guys that I won't submit. He's got better submissions than I do. But I get I get out position him and I get, I think I think out out point him in a submission match. That was the thing. That's why he never wanted to fight me back in the day. Like he couldn't be, he couldn't take me down in wrestling. He couldn't stay on top of me if we stayed if I started him on top. I I just escape. I keep getting out. And and then when we're striking, I used to drop him with body shots and. I oh, used to drop him more than he would drop you at practice. He never dropped me. He never I dropped you. No, never. I drop him with body shots. So I when took you that got one of the best body shots, really? Man, man. Trust me when I say that. Yeah, yeah, I used to drop him with body shots, but like I, that's how I used, to, I used to spar. Like when I spar with guys, I like you know when I spar with guys, I always I was always like, body shots are legal. You know, take it easy on legs and take it easy on the head. You got a fight coming up. You know, I, I was never trying to. I'm not trying to. You know, I mean, obviously, it's like honestly, the, the guys I went hardest with were some of my guys like Glover and and Lighty, who are my you know my guys. They're and, and, and Eric Schwartz, my other, yeah. my other buddy. That, were you state uh, state champion in wrestling? You no, went state? No. Were you wrestling in college as well? Wrestling in college, yeah. Did yep. you wrestle in college? I wrestled in junior college, but I only got recruited because um, I think the the wrestling coach thought I could make the teammates tougher. But then I started getting better in college. But right when I was getting good at wrestling, for the first time in my life, I was getting good because those guys was were like really good wrestlers, and they had a hard time taking me down and stuff. I got injured. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Did you guys ever get a chance to train together? No, we we never. Oh, they know. No, no. We, we never we never trained together. Just because you guys were always trying to fight each other. No, there was no need or no, no just, just never, 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 never
I mean, when, when me and Tito started fighting, we fought, like, after that, was, we were separate camps. I mean, it yeah. was a, Yeah. I mean, I, I, I mean, we worked out a lot with the AKA guys and a lot of guys from up there. Was it like gangland, like our camp versus your camp during that era? Hey, it, was, it, was, it was pretty tight back in the day. Yeah, break it down. Because MMA is a, is a, is a small, it's, it's a small, like, community, small family. So a lot of times, I don't know if you ever dealt with this, like you train you train with somebody that they train, then they tell you everything, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, I trained with him before. Watch out for this, watch out for that. So I never really trained with a whole lot of people just because of, just because of that. Mm. Yeah, it started, started getting like, yeah, back back in those, those days, I mean, I, I usually trained with a lot, of the, a lot of the guys I've trained with them before, trained with the guys they coached with. I used to be able to, I was really good at picking fights back then because you know, I, I knew, they knew everybody. They're yeah. Smaller, like, and, and you, you get to know people, and I, I train with them, and kind of know. What, and like I said, you know the things they do. And yeah. post Pride, though, were you guys friends, or did you guys have beef? No, Chuck and I, we never, we never had beef. Really? Yeah. No. So you guys saw each other. At UFC was all good. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah. yeah I, I mean, I, Randy, Randy Couture, me and him never had a problem. I mean, yeah. we never had a beef. I mean, it's yeah. not. You had I beef mean, with we, Randy, we, though. I did have beef yeah. with Randy. See, but, that's, but that's different. I'm not saying that people don't, but right. we never had a reason to. Yeah. Like, it's not. It's like you guys I, are grown men. Someone else's beef is not your beef. You right. did just inherit beefs. Right. Yeah. Right. It's cool. It's good. Yeah, because I, I didn't pick sides between uh, uh, with him and Tito at, like, even afterwards because, like, that, that, that yeah, they had my, history my, before me. And my, and my thing is, like, I don't understand. Like, people think I think I hate the guy. Like, yeah. I, I don't. Like, I just, you know, I. I you know, we, I don't hate him. I wish him the best. You know, like do your thing. You I know? think like, people just like talking about it because sometimes I think it's even hard for you to realize the impact you two guys had on the sport. You guys are the re you guys are like the founding fathers of taking it from what it was and bringing it into this era where it was watchable. You could follow the fighters and have emotion. Like that's why we fell in love with fighting. And in Rampage's era and kind of Rampage is why we just really got into it and we wanted to be fighters, you know. And then you had this modern day era where it's like cars and McGregor and Sugar Sean and this craziness now where it's like these guys are rock stars you know but everybody has so much love and so much kind of like heart for that story and you two guys because of what you did for, for me being a pride a pride fighter and me watching you and Tito like it was like you and Tito and then Tito got out of the picture then you become like the the big superstar of of UFC you know what I'm saying and and, and well, your every Era is different because a lot of people started watching the sport because of you. Mm -hmm. Some people started watching the sport because the, for Tito. Then here come you, and then you came at a, at a, at a, at a, at, a at a different time, right? Yeah. So when you come, when you came and you blew up uh, ESPN and everybody, went crazy. It, it went no, crazy. that's what we finally, like I said, like, like, like in my in my in my career, like I, I remember when me and Dana were on the road trying trying to get, you know, the Boston paper to put us in the in the uh, you know the trout. In the leisure section, you know, they wouldn't put us in the sports section, but we were trying to get in the leisure section. And I said, and by by you know, later after by like two thousand six, two thousand seven, they're, they're calling me to ask me where I like to vacation for the leisure section. So I was like, all of a sudden, we're like, oh, now we're superstars. Yeah, yeah. yeah now we're now they're they're talking to us yeah. for for rumors. How was uh, my bad? How, nah. how was it doing that movie with Tito though? I remember watching that. You you did that uh, Jet, uh, Jet Li movie. And you, um, remember you, had, yeah. you guys had to fight. Oh yeah, yeah, we did, did that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it was fine. Like, it was cool. Right? Yeah. I told him it's the only way you're going to beat me. That was, that's that's why I want. That's why I want to know. You know, me still trying to stay neutral, but me being a realist, a fight. I was like, I was like, I, and that's before you guys ever fought. Yeah, oh yeah. And and I was like, that was, like, that was early. We were still, I we were still training partners yeah, at the time. And, I, and it's, I'm okay. It's a movie. Yeah, and me me knowing that Chuck could beat Tito. And it's a movie, right? It's a movie, and they had Tito beat Chuck. I was one. I said, I wonder what going through Chuck mind. Uh, for me, I was like, hey man, this is a movie. This is the only time you're gonna beat me. <laughs> you were cool then. Yeah. Um, you guys share a trailer on set? No. No. no, no. <laughs> we, we, you guys eat lunch together? On set? A, no. No. Well, I guess yeah. I, I, I don't know. I don't remember. <laughs> that was but the first I mean, movie you ever done? Um, no, the first one was um, How High. Oh. And you know, it was supposed to be me and Tito for that one, but his fight. Um, the, no, the the movie moved the scene up to the Thursday before he had a Friday fight, uh. and so they brought in Alfie, and I think that's what made it. I think the scene got kind of kind of a little short because it was it was a little weird because Alfie's, I mean, really would be a one twenty five pounder. Yeah, yeah. And so I'm doing a fight scene in the movie. It's like a, it's at a bar where they come in, like at a, at a Halloween party, and in the middle of the Halloween party is a fight. I me, I, I remember my gear. I gotta watch it again. Yeah. I, rem I remember that though, but yeah. it's been so. But it was, it was me and and Alfie. Like, I mean, it was like uh, he's like uh, you know, 
So he, I mean, we were wondering. It looked, it looked, it didn't look weird. I mean, it was supposed to be me and Tito yeah. Yeah. going at it. That would have been awesome. I was watching like a prison movie or something. I saw you. I didn't. I was just watching. I didn't know you was in there. I was like, oh, oh shit, right? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that was a, that was an interesting one. They got, they, they, I got the part. And I'm like, okay, cool. And like, okay, now you're you're Russian. I mean, what? I mean, I mean, I what? <laughs> I'm a what? I think you did good. I well, well, no, but I, said, I asked one. I said, you got to give me. I, I said, okay, I'll do it. Still, but you got to have send me someone that maybe a. A Russian coach, right? So he sp speaks that because I had six. Uh, one of them was six lines, and I, I, I wanted to sound somewhat decent. So they sent this guy, and I'm like, he kept like saying stuff, and like, like he was like, oh yeah, that's good. I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, I was like um, look, man, look, I'm not gonna get mad at you for correcting me. I'm gonna get mad at you if I sound like an idiot. Okay, <laughs> just please correct me. So I, I did. So. But my son's uh, friend's mom was from Russia. <laughs> and she actually, I, I was like, hey, can she come help me? And, and I, I don't know if you know Russian women, she had no problem telling me what to do. <laughs> None. So you so, yeah, she, the movie? She, she's the one, yeah, yeah. We're, we're, she really helped me. Kind of, she worked on me and said, oh, no, do that. She just kept going. I'm like, Stern? Gotcha. Yeah, it was fun. But yeah, she was cool. I was, it was really, really helped me with, uh, with uh, doing the Russian. So you like acting? I like it. I have a good time with it. I like it. I'll keep doing it as long as it's fun. Yeah. You know, I, I like doing different things. My favorite things. was him and Entourage. And my favorite was you and A Team. It's crazy because a lot of people don't even realize if they haven't seen that movie that you were the main character, A list celebrity in an A list movie that was global, A Team with Bradley Cooper as like Mr. T kind of vibe. And like you kind of like set that movie on fire. Like you were like, I felt like you were the movie at that point. Yeah. The character you know, in the movie was the, so big. You know, I loved it. It was fun, but. The movie didn't turn out to be as big as as they said it was going to be. It's kind of, so it was, you know, it's kind of like a letdown. But I had a good time. I made friends for life. I, I like acting. Yeah, you have so much character, and people see you're so authentic and you're so easy to talk to. Same with you guys. That's why I feel like you guys get all these movies. Is you guys are legends, and you guys are great at like just being yourself. What's up with the UFC? That story that they they came and kind of got a private jet. They flew to the Bahamas. They gave you a hundred grand. They said, "Have fun." Is that true? I don't know about that. <laughs> they, they gave you a briefcase with like a million dollars in cash or something. I don't the know about that. I don't know about that. No, no. <laughs> no? All right. That never happened. I would yeah, say yeah, what yeah. that happened to me. Heard, heard it a say, few times. I, I will. I will say they. They, they did. I, they. I, they came to me after I won my the, the first title and they, after right before I fought um, uh, my next fight. And I came, hey, man. How come you didn't come renegotiate your deal? Everyone else has. Because we were not supposed to do it until after this fight, so I was going to wait. And then I, and they and they, they they gave me a pretty sizable check, a check, for, yeah, for written or cash, written. Oh, nice. Yeah, said have fun. Pride was cash. Pride oh, was yeah. a cash. Pride, pride was cash one. That, that was a that was it. I mean, I went I went from. What do you like, mean? Pride I, would just give you guys cash? Yeah. First what do you I, mean? First, first, I went there. I got. I, I mean, I just Wait, I just fight. You say yeah, as if that's normal. Yeah, it's normal. It's no, normal. that's not yeah. normal. <laughs> it's normal. No, nah, you you, had to, you go home like it's like um here here's your here's your here's your purse five purse like um. Okay. Brand new cash and the ink run up on your on your thumb. Yeah. Are you sure it was real cash? No, it was real cash. It, it, it was cash. It's real cash. It worked. It was real cash. It's, I hated I hated it though after a while because the hundreds would get stuck together. It's brand new money. And I was be paying for something with one I'd be giving like two or three hundred. I give you change back for one hundred, bro. I was fucking pissed. My you gotta, you gotta really like get like this to just split it. I'm sorry that that's what you had to deal with, dog. Yeah. I'm sorry you had to deal with that. Bro, I, was so, bro I, I, I ripped my own self off, man. So many people. Who's gonna give you back your money? You give me. Wait, money? so you would go fight? You would win? They'd walk to your hotel room and just give you a bag of cash? No, uh, they would come to your hotel room sometime, but you go into their hotel room and you have oh, like, like a thing. movie. And yeah, you go in their hotel room and they have a. Big fucking stack of cash right there. Are you kidding me? What yeah. money counters, security, the whole thing? No, no, it was already it was already counted and, and ten ten thousand dollars. He stacks. Last, it was already counted. <laughs> it was already there and ten thousand dollars stacks, and you just got to trust them. Like I remember the first time when I fought soccer, I didn't trust them, and I was like, I was counting counting my little money. It was like. Uh, what you don't trust us? I'm like, I don't know y'all, motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> Get your money, man, bitch. Oh man. So and then and then you would fly home and then be like, yo, the, how you get that money on an airplane? You have to, you have to, you have, you can only, you can, you can't. Ten thousand. Ten thousand. Wow. What so a you different. Have to, so time. you have to give it to your 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 teammates. But you what know the pants time. I fought in, the cargo pants. Yeah. <laughs> I used to fucking fill up motherfuckers up with thousand dollars. I mean, but I paid taxes. But I, hey, but I paid taxes on every every cent of that motherfucking shit. I paid taxes on this shit because they they do tax you in Japan though. 
<laughs> oh my god, dude! But, but break down the first the first time you guys fought, like in UFC, to each other. Like you guys are looking at each other and going in. That the wasn't UFC. A, that wasn't the first no, I'm time. Saying the first fight. time in the UFC because you already had the pride. So now when you guys had a fight in UFC, was it different? I'm gonna tell you this. I have, I don't know how many people I ever told, but. That was the most nervous I ever been for a fight when I fought Chuck in, in the UFC. I I had dreams two weeks before our fight, and I never I, this never happened to me before or since, huh? Before the fight, bad dreams. Um, it, this was years ago, but I, I never dreamed about any of my opponents before. Before You're haunting them in the sleep, dog. <laughs> I was trying, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, but like you guys already had fought. So how does that how does that work? Like if you're getting ready to fight again, like does your game plan change? Do you feel different? Like. Because it's kind of like a well, grudge match, look, but it's a different I, but, league. Uh, I, look, it, it, a different league doesn't really change anything. It's just a, it. di- a different environment. I mean, and like, I'm a, I'm a fighter. Look, mm-hmm. I, you ask me, right after I lose a lot, every fight I ever lost, I'm like, damn, I know I can do it better. I know I can fix I know I can beat him. Give me another shot. Give me another shot. Yeah. You know, I know I know I did wrong. I can fix that. Here we go. Like, I, I don't think I've ever, I don't ever, like, I think people ask me for a long, a long time why, why I stuck around so long. I like, it was because it, I was trying to explain, explain. Look, it was it was if I was getting my ass kicked and then getting knocked out, it would have been a lot easier to hang it up. But I was I, I, I was getting paid really well, and I I was getting and I was you know I was um, and I was winning fights and then just getting caught. So you always think, oh man, I can fix that. Okay, I can fix that. And when I finally figured out. I think Dana still says that he made me quit. I, he never made me quit. He was planning on asking me to quit. When I, and, but we had a dinner together, and I, he, I guess he doesn't remember. But I told him, I said, look, man, I, I can't figure out why why this is happening. I shouldn't, I, you know, I can't compete the way I used to. So, and, you know, I, I'm done. You know, and then, you know, just give me some time and let me wait. And, you know, so, so I can adjust to, to being retired. Because it's a weird adjustment when you f- first retire. Um, and what, uh, is that? what does that feel like knowing that you're not going to well, fight anymore? Well, think, think about this. Like as an athlete, you've been getting ready for something your whole life. You know, you got something coming up, something doing this, something there. And then all of a sudden you're done. You, you don't, you don't have that. I mean, I, 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 you don't have any, I've no, for me, it's that, that was my breaks. That was my control. Like I, I had this, I, I want this. I want to be the best in the world. I want to show everybody the best in the world. I want to be here. So that was always my, you know, me being my my crazy side being that was the breaks for my crazy side. Mm-hmm. You know, I was like, you know, you had to, and you have to adjust to what. Now all of a sudden, you know, right? There's there's nothing, I, there's nothing I have to do anymore. You know, I don't have to yeah. get up and train. So they say I say, oh, I take a lot of time off after a fight. I mean, I'd be back in the gym by, by Monday usually. Mm-hmm. You know, if I, unless I was traveling, I'd be back as soon as I got home because I because I got my guys getting ready for it. Glover's getting ready, uh, Lighty's getting ready, my other guys are getting ready. So I was back in taking time off for me meant I was not the focus of the camp. Mm-hmm. I wasn't the only. I was I was and you know or doing like I'm doing off season strength training instead of doing cardio. You know that was that was being off mm-hmm. for me. So you know it's just uh, it, it was it was a different adjustment. Yeah, I'm scared of that. I'm. I see having officially retired. I'm scared of retirement because I've seen people like, you know, BJ Penn come back and people, you know, retire and stuff, and, you know, come back. Because I know you're going to miss it because it's been a part of your life for so long. It's been a part, you know. So I know I know I'm going to miss it. You know, that's. I, that's all. And that's all. Don't thing. You guys feel and, and, like by you, the way, there's nothing else. But there's, there's nothing else. That, like people ask me, what, what what don't you miss? There's nothing I don't miss. Like I like cutting weight. I like cutting weight because I know I'm fighting after that. I know that the results of me cut. The only reason I'm cutting weight is because I got a fight coming up. I'm fighting tomorrow. You know, that's yeah, you I'm making weight. You guys just in love with the process. You guys just I, love the I, sport. I, I like I like training. I, and, and and then also you lose like a lot. And you see that a lot with like uh like uh, other uh, and other people that, like military and others where you don't have that 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 camaraderie that that you know you like that. You know, going to the gym every day with the guys, go hanging out, going doing doing all that stuff. It's just you know you don't have that team anymore. You're not on a team really. You know, like yeah. a, lot, a lot of athletes have that probably that problem. You know, and it's just uh, you know so there's there's a, a lot to be said about you know not not having you know but you just got to find other other things to motivate you and other things other goals and work on some other things. Yeah, uh, speaking of that, that's how me and Tito, uh, that's how me and Chet Congo became good friends because. Um, 
after I got knocked out by Vanellay, then I had that's my first time being knocked out, and I was like gun shy all those years. I'm like, fuck, I gotta fight Chuck, and I need somebody that's gonna come and like beat the shit out of me. And I had met Chet Congo one time, big, tall, yeah, strong guy, big dude. Yeah, I was like, oh, and I had my people find them and and bring them into to my camp, and Congo beat the shit out of me every day. And then, but I got over being gun shy. Why do you guys make so much fun of each other on Instagram? <laughs> <laughs> Why do you guys always bully each other on bro, Instagram? Bro, that's a that's an IG so war. Funny. It's so funny. Bro, good. That's an IG war that, that started years ago. I'm gonna tell you where where we, our war started. We used to train in in the UK, and Congo likes to prank people. And Congo, you know, he's French, and he had this this funky ass cheese from France, and somehow the the cheese ended up in the bottom of my shoes when I was flying home. And I get home, my shoes smell like fucking death. I'm like, what the fuck? And I was so fucking mad at it. And I, and I was like, what the fuck? This motherfucker. He's the only one who had the fucking, the funky ass cheese from, from France. So we go back to training camp next time. And I don't know if you guys know this about Congo, but he, he is the type of guy that, you know, takes like a million showers a day. He's like Metro. And he clean up and glisten up and look, look really good and do all this stuff. So he's real like a germ freak, you know, real bad. So, so one time when he was taking a shower, he takes showers for a long time. We gotta sit there and wait for him. So it's right after the training, and I, you know how it is. I got salty balls, so I went and put my pants down his tea bag pillow, <laughs> right there where he puts his face. <laughs> I tea bag his pillow, <laughs> and then I got a, then I got a video of him laying on the pillow, like snuggling all up to it and everything. And that's when the war started, right? Yeah. But then when you do war with 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 with, with Congo, he call, he called it war. Like, oh, you want war? And then next thing you know, when you sparring, you doing, he come and kick you, kick the shit, knee you in your fucking leg, Charlie horse. I was like, all right, fuck this, fuck this war. So for me, Instagram was the safest war. Yeah. How good of a fighter was he? Uh, Check Congo, man. His his um his kickboxing skills and 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 is on point. He, he's a he's a really good fighter. He's he's one of the toughest guys I ever trained, ever known. Like a lot of these fights that um you guys see uh, check in. I, uh, some of the times he he had like injuries where he needed surgery, mm -hmm. but he didn't he didn't want to pull out of the fight, and he 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 wanted to fight. Did you see the one when he fought Pat Barry? The one oh, of the greatest was, UFC yeah. fights of all time. That's that's him. He would he would not, he don't want to give up. He would not give up. That is one of the best UFC fights of all time. He's a zombie. He gets clocked. He's dead. Folded. Done, you know, and then just wakes up from the dead like a zombie. Yeah, a couple of times. Yeah. He got, the fight should have been over a oh, couple of times. I've never yeah. seen a fight like that. I mean, I've seen some bloody fights. I've seen both of you guys put people in the dirt. I didn't think they were going to stand up, but that fight is just on another level. Yeah. As you guys went into the, the era, like towards the end, or, end of your career, did your training style like kind of change? Did you guys change up your camps, your training partners? Like, did you do anything different? Oh no! Yeah, we always we always adjusting and always training. But like, and as you get as you got as I got older, you know, you got to you know you got you got to recover more, do more recovery, more. You, know, you got to be yeah. trained smarter, not yeah. you know training smarter, and it, it just it changes things. I mean, I always used to joke about like I, when I was twenty five, you know, you, you tell me get ready for sparring, I go like this, put on some gloves, that put on some gloves, and I'm warmed up. You're done. I'm ready to go. You know, when I'm when I was thirty five. You know, it's at forty. You know, it's like, uh, you know, okay, guys, give me a, give me twenty minutes, and then, then we need two rounds of just hands, and now we're gonna do so. Then we'll start kicking. Yeah. You know, as I just start getting warm up, it's just a little it takes a little more time to warm up and make sure just to make sure you don't pull something. Yeah. Yeah. As I got old, I had to go to um, heavyweight, and I, I didn't, I didn't, I wasn't proud of myself about that. I didn't like it. I didn't like going heavy. I, I like two two o five, but it was getting harder and harder to cut weight. I started cutting. I started I started walking around. At first I started walking around like weighing like 220. Then over the years I'm wearing 225, 230, 235. When I, when I got to 235, I was like, whoa, what's going on? I'm, I'm wearing 235 before camp. And then I'm 240, 250. I'm like, man, something's not right. So that 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 changed everything for me when I started getting heavier. And, mm -hmm. and I'm still training hard, still eating the just same way. Age. And everything and just the way it's hard to keep it off. It was hard. What, what about this current era of UFC? Like McGregor right now and Chandler on the on the Ultimate Fighter. You guys have both been coaches. Like, what's your what's your opinion on that? Like Chandler and McGregor on the Ultimate Fighter, they eventually have to fight each other, right? Um, that's like they're supposed to, yeah. Yeah, that's, you think that's gonna happen? I don't know. I don't you know, but that's kind of like I, you never know. I was, I was like when T, when me and Tito were on there. Like I knew from the beginning that he wasn't gonna fight me. Then he pulled out of that one. Oh yeah. yeah. Um, oh, he, he, and they 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 put a thing in there from from week one. 
of a couple of his fighters talking about how he has a, a neck injury and he's not going to fight. That was from week one. They put it in like week eight. Oh, yeah. And they moved it and put it in week eight. But, he, but I told I told uh, Dana when uh, Dana came in, hey, how come you haven't signed your contract yet for a fight? Like, uh, I'm like, well, you know I'm going to sign. I'll, we're going to work it out. I'm going to sign. Because he's like, Tito's already signed. I was like, well, yeah, but you know, that doesn't mean it, him signing doesn't mean anything. That doesn't mean he's going to fight. He's still not going to fight. I don't think he's going to fight, but I, we'll get it signed. Yeah. You know, so. And then, and then what about kind of like the Sugar Sean? Taking the belt, kind of catching Aljo and like these. Well, new that was champions. awesome. That was, I was, hey man, he did a great job. I was, yeah. I mean, I picked it. I, I, I you know, I, you know, I, I thought if, uh, if I think he, I thought he could catch him in the first couple of rounds. So I, I mean, that's I, I had him. I had him winning my knockout. What about Alex? Like moving up a division? They had to be Yeah, he's huge. Like I mean, I, I um, yeah, he, that's a, it's a rough cut, man. He's a big boy. That's yeah. a, that's like he's a big boy for 185. I was worried about his chin because you know he got he got he got rocked the first time they fought in the UFC, right? Yeah. And the referee kind of saved it. Then the second time he got knocked out the same way. But that could have been from him cutting a whole lot of weight. When you cut a lot of weight, your, your yeah, chin suffers. Yeah, it suffers from that that water. Because he did. He, 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 he dehydrated. Yeah. He, he's fought at 205 already since then, right? Yeah. Well, yeah, he just went to 205 and beat Jan. Yeah, and he yeah. did good, right? I yeah, he did really good. Yeah. I, don't think I, I don't think I saw that. Yeah, he did good. He did really good. So he's going to stay at that weight class now? I think so. I think he planned on after that. Yeah, I think no matter what happened, he planned on moving up. Yeah. And we have we see John Jones has a big fight coming up, right? He's going to be fighting Stipe. What do you think about that? I think uh, he's fighting Stipe, yeah. yeah I, 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 I don't like to ask. When, when's next. it coming up? I think it's like in two months. I think it's in October, right? Should be fun. Right? Yeah, It'll yeah. be interesting. I saw I saw John Jones um, do an interview recently, and he said that um, he's going to win um, first round submission. And wh what I know about what I know about John Jones is um, his mind is really strong. So so if he if he says that if I was a bad man, that's what I would bet on. You know how you got to. Yeah. You know, I never bet on any fights before in my life. Yeah. Not not yet. No. I will. I will do it one day. We gotta start I, picking fights on this. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. So if I was a bad man, I I would I would bet. What he said, yeah. You think he still has uh, uh, enough in the tank? Obviously, he's one of the best ever, but he has enough in the tank to go in there and just. I, I think I think he has enough to. I think he's really smart. I don't think he's going to stand with Stipe. No, that's why I think he said like first round to me. He's going to he's going to take him down and, and wrestle the same yeah. way he did. Uh, well, that's the one thing John does really well. I mean, or not the one thing. One of the things is he fights where he fights where you're not good, and he's. He's pretty well rounded everywhere. Like he, he he picks where you're not um where you're not good. He like you if if you're a better if he feels you're a better striker than him, he'll take you down. Yeah. If he goes he's, he's a, you're a better uh, jiu jitsu guy than him, he'll stand, keep you standing up. And he's been able to he's been able to control that distance with people um for his yeah. whole career. Is he still with Jackson out there? I don't know. Because yeah, they got the best game plan. Sometimes it'd be Mexico, boring. Right? In Albuquerque? Albuquerque, yeah. you see out there? I think he is. Have you ever trained with John? Uh, no. Hmm. Are you friends with John? I bet him. I, I think I, I like him. Yeah, I yeah, yeah. nothing against yeah. him. If you were going into this fight, if you were in Stipe's camp, how are you trying to prepare Stipe for John Jones? How would you prepare against him right now? You know, I'd have to watch. I'd have to watch yeah. some stuff. I don't want, I, I, I mean, I've seen him fight a couple times. I mean, yeah. I, you know, recently, but it's been a while. But you do you watch film to kind of get your game plan? If, if yeah, no. If I watch film to get a game plan, I watch and I, I try to tell people I watch fights different if I'm if I'm trying to coach. Yeah, like I watch, I go watch a fight. I'm, I'm having fun. I'm watching the fight. I'm cheering for both guys. I usually usually unless I'm, I'm friends with somebody, I, yeah. so I just want to get. I want good action. I want to. I'm having fun. I'm enjoying the fight. Um, if I'm watching it to coach, I'm looking at different things. I, I'm trying to pick. I'm trying to pick tendencies and see what he does and and how to pick him apart. And 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 that's one thing they're really good. Uh, uh, John's coach are really good at. You watch a lot of tape ever? No, no, I don't. I don't watch any tape. Uh, I, I did one time. I watched um, before I fought Vanderlei in in, in in Pride. I watched every last one of his fights, and I think that's the reason why I lost. And after that, I never really watched tape anymore. Psyched yourself out? Yeah, because you know, you, you know, how my styles the, with the cover and roll, and back back and from the beginning and all that. You know, they were just feeding them like. They were just feeding him like nobodies, and he was just destroying them. And he was fast, so I thought like, oh, um, I'm my my cover and roll design. Take three punches, then come back. I was like, oh, he's too fast. I won't I won't be able to come back. And that's how he beat me. I was he was covering. I was covering rolling really good, but I wasn't firing back. So he grabbed me and and Muay Thai need me because I wasn't firing back. So I was like, I said that's like this. That fucked me up. So I, I never watched it anymore. 
fights. That's it. I let my coaches do it. Like yeah. I don't, I don't want to watch my opponents. Yeah, I like to learn. I like to learn my opponent while I'm in there fighting. I like to, I like to figure them out while I'm fighting them. And if I get my ass kicked, like you know, I get my ass kicked. Yeah, I mean, I mean, as you guys were training though, like coming up in the game, is there is there some sort of martial art that you always knew? Like, damn, if I could master this style of martial art or this specific discipline, I'm always gonna be good. Was there like one thing that you always kept like? this has to be my most polished martial art or no, you just need to always be well-rounded. I think the biggest thing about MMA is being well-rounded and being yeah. able to, being able to, to fight in all situations or defend yourself in all situations. Yeah. You know, it's like, yeah. there's a, there's a lot of different ways to win and lose. And uh, if you're not, if you have any big holes in any of them, someone will exploit it. Yeah. I, I, I never really considered myself a, a martial artist because um, I, you know, I have a brawling uh, back, yeah. background because uh, I never got I never got good at anything. Remember, I started wrestling when I was seventeen, and then I'm then I started jujitsu with Fabiano Iha. And, Fabiano, and, uh, you remember him? Yeah. Hell yeah, yeah. And then I did uh, Muay Thai when I started training with Tito after I fought Sakuraba. Then I then I then I started loving Muay Thai. I started loving it, and I got, I knocked out when I knocked out my first opponent, that little Japanese guy. In Japan, I knocked them out. Like, oh my god, I can knock people out. And so I, I got away from wrestling and slamming people and stuff so much just to try to knock people out. And then I learned boxing, and then I loved boxing. But then my Muay Thai got went to shit, and my and my and my wrestling shit went to shit once I learned boxing. Who is your Who is your favorite person you ever got to knock out? Favorite person I got to knock out? Yeah. Tito. Like, come on, that's an easy. That's an easy question. That was a layup. No, layup. I mean, come on. Besides Tito, anyone else? Oh, well, um, you know, besides Tito, no. I mean, yeah. ba- ba- I didn't, I, I, there's a lot of knockouts I liked. Yeah. Were pretty cool. <laughs> I, 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 I like all. I mean, I, all I've had quite, quite quite a few knockouts. I mean, kickboxing, I had 16. So, um, I got. I, I, uh, I mean, I like, I like head kicks. I, I like. I go, yeah. what am I, you like to kick someone in the head? Yeah. I always wanted to do that. I always wanted to kick someone in the head. I could never really do head kicks. <laughs> you can't kick someone in the head? I, I, threw, I, I threw one when I fought um, uh, Fabio Mambababo, but it, I, I, I got so excited it went over his head. I've just never been a head kicker. But I trained for that yeah. fight to kick because he was a boxer. I said, oh, I'm going to kick him in the head. But I, you gotta, you gotta be really, you gotta be good to kick someone in the head and have power behind it. Yeah, that's, man, that's, that's yeah. tough. It just wasn't in my 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 power, my willpower. It that's wasn't, it. Wasn't for me. Any more fighting for you, Chuck? I don't, I don't think so. No. I mean, that, what about uh, any uh, jiu-jitsu, uh, uh, grappling? Maybe, you know, maybe you know, grappling. Maybe grappling. I don't Bob Sapp told me that you and Glover wanted to do the two-headed monster fight in Thailand. He told me I forgot about that. Glover might have said something. I don't know. Oh, I, you didn't I, say I, I haven't said it, but, but I, I mean, well, I don't know what that. What, what is that? It's like it's like they put us in like one t-shirt, and you can only use one hand. Like Bob Sapp, we fought we fought some dudes out there. Bob Sapp used his left, and I use I use my right. It was it's it's sex like fun. It was real. Oh yeah, yeah no. I, yeah. I mean, if, 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 if Glover wanted to, I could do something like that. Yeah, that sounds like a blast. It, it was that's the most fun I ever had in the ring. Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> That was yeah, so, so like, yeah, probably talking to Glover. Yeah, but it's not that's not a fight though. No, no. No, that's not a fight. But that that was that entertainment. Was, that was pretty funny because Bob is Bob is way taller than me, so it was kinda awkward. But he's luckily he was a southpaw and I'm a right hand, so he was on the left. Yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> 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 Bro, I had so much fun doing that shit. You think you and Glover could knock someone out in there? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think you could have killed someone in there or what? Uh, you know, you don't. I don't know. I you mean, know. I mean, you guys are really trying to hurt this. Thing. I don't. I don't. You know, it's big gloves. It, yeah, it was supposed to be friendly. It's supposed to be friendly, so we were friendly. But, but it's like you know, I haven't fought. In, I haven't fought in three three years since COVID. I was like. <laughs> I got as soon as I put those gloves on, <laughs> just start swinging. Yeah. Wait, wait. I just want to know what about this dude who tries to run up on you in the end when it's over? Yeah, the referee. And look at and and this dude just coming over here saying you just drop him for no. <laughs> <laughs> he ran up on me. <laughs> <laughs> but you know it, we was in Thailand. And yeah. It's it's, a, it's called fight circus, so it's yeah. entertainment. Yeah. So yeah. don't tell don't tell me I get to entertain people. Yeah. So then whatever I do, like motherfucker was entertainment. No, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> We're having fun. We're having fun. Hey, 
I'm gonna tell you. Yeah. Thank you so much for um, coming down, and making time to oh, come oh, talk. Thanks, to thanks for having me, guys. It's been fun. Yeah. It's a good time. It's yeah. always it's always amazing to see. First of all, Ram being a legend and so humble and graceful and kind of putting together this podcast and then another great and a goat of the sport and you guys just to watch you guys chop it up and me to be able to interject is it's a blessing and it's awesome for the fans. I think the fans most importantly appreciate you for doing this week in, week out and for guys like you to come here and take your time out of the day to do this and you've already given so much to them. I think it just shows them your character and I, I think that's the best part about this. I love seeing all these legends come together and kind of just sit here and chop it up. Yeah, I, I feel you. I think um, people are surprised that Chuck and I are, like cool because like I bumped into him in Memphis and we took a picture and the shit blew up on my social media and I, and I had no. just saw you in UK. Yeah, yeah, we were just out there. We were just out that there. Was, that was a fun time. That was a fun time. We had a few drinks together. Had a good time. You guys drank? Yeah, yeah. You guys yeah. went to the bar? No, we was at the, uh, at the, the hotel, that, bar. hotel bar. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was we cool. were at the hotel bar. No fighting? No, no arguing? No, no, no. 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 we a lot of WWE guy, a couple of WWE, old WWE yeah, guys. Yeah, so it was, it was a good fun. Time. It was it was fun time. Yeah, a lot of people hit me up and was like, "Yo, don't let those two on a podcast. They're, they're gonna scrap in front of you." No, I'm like, nah, they we can't we never had problems. I just always laughed. Like I, I remember we went to Babies one time. We, we had that t- like oh, come on, back in the day, back in the Hard Rock Casino. Yeah. Vegas. they go, "Hey man, um, are you gonna be okay at Cedars down there?" I go, "Um, you got a couple million dollars? <laughs> no, then yeah, we'll be fine. We're not gonna fight." <laughs> That easy. <laughs> yeah, we're not going to fight for free. Sorry, right, see you later. I love that. I love that. All right, thank you. Thank you, Chuck. Thanks, thanks, brother. Thank Amazing. You. The GOAT. The GOAT. The GOAT. Thank you guys for tuning in to Fade On Sight, man. There is the man. He's bringing in legends after legends, man. Yeah, y'all. They, y'all and, they, and don't don't get it twisted. They only coming because you're here. Nah, yeah, don't get it twisted. There. It's out there. <laughs>